So, something hit a new all-time high today, and it wasn't the charts. Alright everyone, welcome back to the channel for another update on Bitcoin and Solana. It's currently Monday the 26th of February, almost midnight where I am. A little bit of a late one, but I thought better late than never. Been a little bit busy today, so let's just dive right into the charts and let you know exactly what happened today and why Bitcoin's rushing to the upside, including Solana. So, diving right into the news, like I said, something hit a new all-time high today. It was the total cumulative flows of the nine Bitcoin ETFs. They broke a all-time high in terms of volume today, raking in 2.4 billion worth of inflows. Now, this new all-time high is just barely eclipsing the previous all-time high on day one. These inflows were mainly from IBIT, which is the iShares ETF, and the second most cumulative flows came from FBTC, which is Fidelity's BTC ETF fund. So the ETF funds are absolutely taking all of Bitcoin off the market. We talked about this recently. We told you a supply shock is going to come. These people are just going to continue consuming day after day after day. We were talking on average about 500 million a day today. 2.4 billion absolutely insane so we don't have the exact breakdown of every single etf i'll publish that data when it does come out tomorrow as you can see bitcoin is just going absolutely crazy peter shift bitcoin bears checking the bitcoin price not enjoying it right now but as you know let's dive right into the charts and talk about what's happening so in terms of the macro time frame we've just blasted through our second price target the first one in the macro being the 618 fib the second one being the CME gap at 53,400. And we were talking about our final price target in the macro, at least for the next couple of weeks or so, being positioned at this 786 Fibonacci from Bitcoin's high down to its low at exactly 58,000. That is the next level that you want to keep your eyes on for Bitcoin. And considering how everything between 58,000 and where we are right now, 55,300, is pretty much white noise. I don't really expect for us to stall out at this moment in time. I expect for us to get continuation, especially if these ETFs just keep on coming in day after day after day. So if we're looking at the four hour time frame, this was roughly where the ETFs stopped trading on Friday. And as you can see, they took a little bit of a dip down, a little bit of a rally over the weekend, a slight correction. And as soon as the markets went live today, the ETFs just went absolutely crazy. And of course, you know, people were probably sitting on the sideline on the weekend thinking, hey, as soon as these open up on Monday, I might buy some more Bitcoin. People started rushing in, people started FOMOing, the volume just went crazy. And as you can see, the price is just going up to the upside. So on the four hour time frame, this looks like a falling wedge. This has obviously already broken to the upside and hit the price target. If we are coming over to the daily time frame, you can actually see one could argue that this was a bull flag and we're just getting continuation on that. Now, I'm not even going to draw the price target of the bull flag because it's probably going to be absolutely ridiculous. But what I will highlight is we do have some very, very nice signals right now. We've broken out of the falling wedge and on the daily time frame you can see that we have bottomed on the stochastic rsi with this confirmed breakout with some very bullish news that the etfs are just continuing to buy this is really pushing my narrative that i've been talking about of the supply shock which is probably going to be coming within the next month or so just in my opinion on the weekly time frame as well you can see we've already had that bottom on the stochastic rsi since the etfs went live we had that dip down to about 38 Ever since that happened, you know, we've just been zooming, zooming, zooming to the upside. And like I said, on the daily and on the weekly, we've got more room to move to the upside, which is why I'm still calling for 58,000 to come very, very soon for Bitcoin. That's pretty much all there really is to talk about. In the higher time frames. I did want to once again talk about one thing and just add one slight spin to this. Now, we talked about this before on the monthly time frame, how coming into the halvings, you tend to have a correction. After the first major halving, you can see this is when we really started the four-year cycle from high to low. This was the 618 Fibonacci. We pretty much always got rejected on the 618 and broke down into the halving before the bull run. Next bull run that came from the 2017 bear market from high to low, we retested the 618, had a little bit of a correction into the halving. Well, this was a very, very brutal correction into the halving. And then we started the bull run. This is the only time in history where from the high to the low, we've just absolutely, you know, we touched the 618 fib. We got rejected on it. Within three or four weeks, we were just blasting to the upside of this. We've got a bullish engulfing candle on the monthly. And yeah, you can see right now, could be a little bit scary. The monthly stochastic RSI is technically very, very overbought right now, sitting 100. But I did also just want to highlight 
other times when the stochastic RSI has been topped out at these levels on the monthly time frame, this is often a sign that you are entering into some type of bull run territory. So if we look at the first top over here at 100, if we look at the second top over here at 100, so you know, throughout Bitcoin's history, you can see when you are in these bull runs, you can remain topped out at the absolute upper echelon of the stochastic RSI, and it can reset even though price is blasting to the upside. Over here, you can see top. We just ignored it. Over here, you see top. We remained round about 100 for, you know, multi years. We just continued to blast up to the upside. Here, we saw a top. And yeah, this was the one instance where, well, this is, you know, a plethora of instances where we hit the 618 coming into the top on the monthly stochastic RSI. And yeah, we did correct into this. However, like I said, things are just looking a little bit different right now. We're showing absolute insane strength. And especially if these ETFs keep on rushing in, we're just going to see the price just continue to get bought up. We're just going to see dips continue to vanish. However, do remember, I do want to hazard a little bit of caution once again as fast as they buy, they can sell, even though that's not really my base case. That's not why I'm predicting. I think they're just going to continue buying up until we just see a crazy, crazy blow off top coming, you know, within you know maybe a year or two. So let's talk about what's happening for Solana right now. Yesterday, two of my favorite signals for leverage trading Solana Flash. And I shared this over on my Twitter. I told you this around about $104. I said two of my favorite leverage trading strategies have just fired long. These God tier confirmations being a bounce on the 50 TMA and a one day bottom on the stochastic RSI. So if we're looking at Solana right now, you can see this has already aged well. We did have a slight correction back down to $100. I did actually post during the time this correction was happening, starting off around about $103. But I was hedging my long position with a short position, which is, you know, higher position, but with a tight stop loss. And, you know, we nuked down to these levels. My short covered my long for some period of time. I took profit and I used that to add to my collateral to my long while we were coming to the downside because I was still confident that despite the fact we were having a slight pullback, we were going to see this nice move back up to the upside. So I am currently sitting in a long right now. You've already had the confirmation from the one day TMA. Don't ask me in the comment section, should I open a trade now? Make sure you follow me over on Twitter. Make sure you follow me over on Discord. Then you can get these updates when I'm entering these trades. Now, you know, you've missed a lot of the move. If you're entering with high leverage, we might have a correction. We might bounce from a higher low and you might get wiped out. So just be careful if you are leverage trading. I'm already positioned. As you can see, just absolutely moving to the upside daily stochastic RSI bottoming, confirmation on the 50 TMA. So the real question is, where is Solana going right now? Now, unfortunately, for some reason, over on my Elliott Wave chart, all of my Elliott Waves have just completely disappeared. So I've had to redraw this. We don't have the microwave count, but we're still looking at the exact same thing. We had this correction, which was a start of a new wave count. Now, within this macro wave one, once again, one, two, three, four, five, that was wave one. Then we had a A, B, C correction. This was the bottom of wave two. Then we were looking at something like one, two, three, four, five, topping out here. We talked about, I believe in my most recent video for Bitcoin and Solana, how I believe the C wave was going to bottom round about above $100 or so. We bottomed at, you know, 98, 90. So who's counting the $1 and 10 cent? But nonetheless, as you can clearly see, this looks like the start of a new wave count right now. And we've specifically, if I remove the microwave counts now, so there's not too many waves going on on the chart right now. This is really where we think things are going to go parabolic because this was not an expansionary one wave. This was not an expansionary free wave. Well, you know, it depends on what definition you're looking at. Of course, we expanded up. We expanded up. But in Elliott wave theory, normally the free wave is very, very large, much bigger than the one wave. And if it's not, if wave one and wave three are lackluster, you can have something called a non-extensionary one and three wave. And we're and when that five wave comes, this is a different type of five wave structure where the five wave is actually much larger than wave three and much larger than wave one, because this is kind of just some distribution phase before we really make those higher lows and start blasting to the upside. So this could be the start of a new wave count. I don't want to draw this as, you know, wave one. I don't want to draw this as wave two. I don't want to, you know, preemptively jump into this at this moment in time, because I really do think this could go very, very high. So I don't want to draw wave one too early. I think we'll know, you know, when that correction comes. But looking at the higher time frames, I've got some very, very high price targets. 
not for the rest of the bull run. This isn't where I'm staying. Solana is going to top out this bull run, but you know, in the immediate short term, price targets we can look at within the next couple of weeks or so, and then we'll look for a reset. Then we'll look for higher price targets type thing. So within this final five wave, which I think is going to develop within the next two weeks, two three weeks or so, I think Solana number one could come up to this high down to this low. If we're looking at this, we had a bull flag breakout from the high to the low. We've got a price target up here, the 1.236 at $138 for Solana, meaning from where we are right now, Solana could rally about another 26% within the next you know, two weeks or so. Sounds crazy, but look at what's happening right now. Moving on to a slightly more bullish price target on the weekly time frame, from the bull run high down to the bear market low right here. We've got a very, very important price target, the 618 FIB. $165. We do also have to you know, point out there is going to be resistance here at $145. So really my first price target, $138, is my most conservative. My most bullish price target is up here at $165. And some median ground could be round about $145 to $135. So for today, my friends, that's all I've got. Very nice developments in the charts. As always, we'll keep you up to date with the ETF flows. We'll keep you up to date with the news. Sorry today was a late one, but I thought better late than never. Try and stay consistent. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.